Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease has all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shine, and often is his gold complexion dimmed, and every fair from fair sometime decline by chance on nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe, or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Music to hear. Why hearst thou music sadly? Alright, so welcome to this week's vlog. Uh, you may have noticed a few things. Uh, maybe the audio is a little better than it usually is, and you might have noticed this thing right here as well. This is a microphone, uh, and my friend loaned it to me. Right, I used it to narrate my last hiking video, and uh, here's why I can't be using this mic all the time when I'm vlogging. Right, so well, let me show you. If you take a look. Right here, right, that's the mic. You'll see that it has a wire coming out of it, right, and that goes in there, right? In other words, this thing is USB powered. Also, you need a device that can record audio through the USB, and that's pretty much just my laptop. Really. Which means that uh, the mic won't be able to leave the immediate vicinity of my laptop and that means that I won't be able to do stuff like this thing where I turn all the way around to make some kind of point and the microphone is now behind me I will also not be able to do stuff like you know tumble about the room which is something I prefer to be able to do you know in this vlog so I guess the upshot of this is that I won't be using the microphone much during this vlog except for you know like in little pieces of things where I think that I can sit on a table and do it like reciting a poem in the beginning of this video and also there's the part where audio syncing is a bit of a pain because it's an external microphone the audio is external so you... by the way I hope you like that poem and I actually won a poetry recital contest before in school a very long time ago a very long time ago So I'm heading to the mall, uh, neighborhood mall, and I'm kind of curious what the situation is like in there with the new guidelines and social distancing. The mall is usually very crowded, so we'll see if it still is. I know that that might that might still look kind of busy to you, but if you know if you knew anything about what normal normally means for Clementine Mall, that is not normal. 
the crowds are much thinner. There's a lot of evidence of enforcement actually. And the guidelines are still, you know, laxer than in many other countries, but they are gradually being enforced and I suppose that's a good thing. I got stuck a bit there because there was this protective piece of rubber that was attached to the new faucet and that just kind of completely threw me away. I didn't notice it and I was wondering why the heck, why doesn't it connect? So it was the rubber valve, I was a retard, it's working now. So another thing that happened is yesterday in the morning, I actually went out, I went hiking, I did a short hike, quite a nice one. I also filmed that hike, so the plan is to release that in two months or so. But I just realized today while sifting through the footage that I made a really silly mistake in that trip. Somehow the ND filter setting was left to on on. It seems like I actually filmed that whole hike with the ND filter on which unfortunately means some of the footage is going to come out you know, darker and grainier than it should and some others will come out looking you know, a little shaky, a little laggy but I think still a good proportion of the footage looks good enough that I'm still going to go ahead and edit that together so that's going to come out in two months or so and I just, I guess I just need to remember next time not to make a silly mistake like that when filming a hike. we're going to be having today.
Alright, so before wrapping up the vlog this week, I know we're all kind of tired maybe of me yapping away about COVID already. But I have a little bit more to say, so bear with me. And this time it has to do with fake news. I just want to point out a few things. We know two things about you know this fake news situation. One, we know that fake news is a thing, that you know fake news exists. There are people out there that are intentionally manufacturing fake news. It's not a matter of people making mistakes or uh, people, you know, getting details wrong. No, fake news is being manufactured. People are creating fake news for their own purposes. Second, while we may not be very clear about, you know, the particular motives of each of these people who are making fake news, we can say something that is likely true about the vast majority of them, and that is that part of their objective is for you to actually see and read the news. Part of it is about attention. They want people to actually check out and read, you know, whatever news that they create. And the corollary of that, I think, is that since the people, the manufacturers of fake news are looking for you to click and to read the news, naturally they will design the news that they're manufacturing to appeal to certain things that we like or views that we hold dear and such and such things like that. And I think this is borne out by the data as well. If you look at, uh, if you've been reading around, fake news spreads in all different directions. You know, if you're if you are a Trump supporter, you will find a lot of fake news that is extremely pro-Trump. And if you're not a Trump supporter, you will find a lot of fake news that is extremely anti-Trump. That's the idea, right? And it makes sense because if I want to create fake news and my objective is attention, then of course I will manufacture news such that they will be appealing to particular views and particular sentiments in my target audience. Given these two things, it seems to me that, that we should start expecting our own views, you could say, or opinions to be targeted in this way. So whenever we see a piece of news that is particularly appealing to us or that seems to support a particular viewpoint or push a particular stance in a very interesting way, that should immediately be triggering our alarm bells now because we know that that's, that's the kind of thing that is likely, naturally, to be targeted by people who want to create fake news. Of course, not all such news is fake, but one of the best tellers uh, one of the best things to pique our attention should be that it's very interesting, it's very uh, supportive of a cherished view, that sort of thing. So in, in evaluating a news source, you know, what you would generally want to do is think about, you know, uh, this organization or individual or whatever the news source is, the history, what sort of motivations they might have, and what kind of regulations they answer to, things like that. So anything for which this sort of basic information is not available, in my opinion, they should just be discarded because then you can't evaluate. There's no criteria with which you can judge whether whatever news that they're creating, uh, reporting is reliable or what the degree of reliability is. And so as far as I'm concerned, my opinion is they should just be regarded as garbage. All right. So that wraps up what I wanted to say uh, and that pretty much wraps up the vlog as well. So thank you again very much for watching and uh, I will see you again presumably next week. So. Kakuri ga umidashita haiku Heya Kono aida 掃除したのになぜ汚い